So when you think of wonderful plants, I always think of Seabright. I'm out here with uh, Thomas now, and we're going to be talking, Thomas, today about some of the things that you're going to be having for sale at Garden Palooza this year. And of course, you can always come out to Seabright and pick the plants up there too, but jump in with me and just show me stuff that you love and, and why you love it. Okay, well, this time of the year, it's always going to be a really good thing to, for epimediums. They're, they're going to be in full flower. Um, they're wonderful plants. Uh, they come in deciduous varieties, evergreen varieties. They have these beautiful little flowers. They come up early in the spring and are in full flower about the same time that the hosses are just coming out of the ground. Right. So they provide something really early and then you have the beautiful foliage the rest of the year. And what I, what I love about your place out here, Thomas, is that I, I think these are so often undersold and there's a few that are popular, a couple of varieties yeah. here and there, but yeah. you guys have such a great selection of them. Yeah, we have over hundred different varieties of wow. these, so there's lots to choose from. So yeah, I think they should be planted more because they're so easy to grow. Right. So what makes them easy to grow, Thomas? Well, once they're planted in and they get established, uh, they're really tolerant of drier shade conditions. So there's nice. very few plants that can take the drier conditions in the shade and epimedium fits that bill. Um, so they're real easy that way. I just need to trim them off in late winter, the old foliage, and they come up fresh and look great. And just average water and, and shade. And then filling in a, a dry shade area is really great for yeah, them yeah, too. Yes, then. and there's also ground cover varieties, so you can use them as a ground cover as well as clumpers and ground cover wonderful, varieties. So. Wonderful. So that, that's epimediums. And there's, of course, ferns. We do over 100 different types of hardy garden ferns. This is a really sweet one, uh, uh, the Crested Maidenhair Spleenwort. Um, this one only gets to about eight inches in height. Uh, shade, of course, average moisture, uh, real easy to grow, and um, just a darling little fern. And again, another thing that I think ferns are often not utilized enough because they are great shade-loving and even some sun-loving ones. Yes, and I've discovered that a lot of the ferns, too, um, will compete really well with tree roots. Nice, yeah. 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 Once Which you get makes them sense. In a yeah, forest, yeah, they yeah, would yeah, have yes, to. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So that's a good, a good choice. And of course, the this is another uh, fern that we grow, and this is the evergreen uh, uh, Himalayan maidenhair fern. Beautiful foliage like this, to about a foot tall, evergreen all winter long. Just a lovely fern, and e super easy to grow, and this one will eventually cover the ground too. It's more of a ground cover fern. And some of them, I don't know if this is the specific variety, Thomas, but some do get quite yes, tall yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the ferns can come. There's quite several different types of maidenhair ferns. This one particular one only gets about a foot tall, but yes, they can get you know, two or three feet tall, depending on which uh, maidenhair you got. And we've got a, quite a big selection of different And I have to throw in my love of this right here. Yeah. This is a beautiful one. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the narrow tassel fern. Uh, there's the, the tassel fern you see out there quite a bit, which spreads a little bit wider. This one is a narrower form of it. A beautiful fern. We've taken off the old fronds already, and this is the new growth that's coming for the year. Yeah, it's a, it's a gorgeous fern. And then on that, I noticed that, of course, in nature, it's never going to look like this in the spring because right. there's old growth, but you guys right. really do a great job right. of cleaning them up, which makes them even more stunning. Right, right. And this is an evergreen fern, and on the evergreen ferns, you want to wait until very late in the, in the winter when the new fronds are just getting ready to start coming before you take off the old ones. The plant uh, still is getting... Uh, sustenance and, and right. food from the old fronds. And then I'm going to say that I'm assuming these little circular things are the new growth. Correct. So if they start coming up, you can Correct. tell Correct. I better Correct. prune it soon. You can even tell at the base. This one is not showing it, but before they, when they're still in tight in the base, when it's easier to do yet, you don't need to uh, Be careful about, cutting around it. Right, 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 right. So yeah, no, that works very well. Of course, we've got lots and lots of different hostas. Um, this is one called uh, Wolverine, which is one of the very earliest ones to come up. And uh, in Ahu, those are both very early varieties. There should be lots of, uh, of hostas uh, available during Garden Palooza week. And um, yeah, they... And tell me how many varieties you guys grow. Oh, now. we grow over a thousand different varieties of oh, hostas. Oh, so. oh my goodness. So if, if you're looking for a <laughs> type of hosta then, and we don't have it, then we can certainly tell you where to get it. Right. So. And then again, of all of the, this is easy too. All of these three varieties you've shown us so far yes, plants yes. are all really easy. Yeah, yeah, hostas look like they should be tropical or something difficult or fussy, but they're so easy. The only thing you have to worry about is slugs, but if you can keep your slugs under control, they're super easy to yeah. grow. And then of course, we have to talk about some blooms. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is a, these are abutilins, and uh, these here are absolute hummingbird magnets. Um, these here are zone eight plants, so if you're, if you're growing them in a container, which they look fantastic in containers, right. You need to protect the container. I plant them deeper so that, like you would a hardy fuchsia, so that they protect the root a little bit more. If you get a, if we get really, really bad winter, you could end up losing it. But I've had many of them come back year after year after year, and once they start flowering, they have these beautiful little flowers that bloom 
you know, constantly until frost. A frosts. long time. Yes, yes. <laughs> they just keep flowering and flowering, and they'll, you know, they'll come up, you know, five, six feet tall, and uh, are beautiful things. And I would grow them, even if they were, I had to grow them as annuals, I'd grow right. them every year. They're, they're spectacular. Well, that's what I was going to say. They and they grow quickly. Yes. So they it's grow not like quickly. you're going to take years yes. and years to get yes. one to bloom. Yeah. Yeah. And the hummingbirds absolutely adore them. Yeah. They so, sure do. So. Well, you know, and trust me when I tell you this is only a small selection of what they have out here at Seabright, but uh, if you come to Garden Palooza, you can certainly buy them there. And if you miss that wonderful event, you can always come out to Seabright for more information on how to get here and their hours and stuff. Go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over. My friend, thank you so much. Thank you, man. Always a delight. Yeah.